Hello everyone, and as always, welcome back to Strategy Gaming Dojo, where we find, learn, and play one more turn of the great strategy games, and today it's back into the big one, Gary Grigsby's War in the Pacific Admirals Edition. This is our play-by-email challenge against the devilish Mr. Lodrick, and it is now March 21st, 1942, and we are going to watch the combat resolution together and see what happens, so let's get right to it. Uh, of course, always on the lookout for the Indian Ocean Carrier Fleet that he's got. And then he's also got the Pacific Ocean Carrier Fleet. Uh, they can just run around and kind of do as they will in the early game. Uh, but we're hoping, hoping anyway, that uh, we're going to kind of stop the bleeding here a little bit. We've also got concerns up in China uh, where he's got super armies roaming around. He's almost into Rangoon as well. So let's see what happens this time. And he's occupying a base in northern Mindanao there. We didn't have anything there. So he just walks in, says hello to the locals. I actually don't know much about uh, the Japanese occupation of the Philippines. I mean, if it was like some of their other occupations... Uh, probably not quite that friendly, but I, I have never read a book on that topic specifically. Oh, that's the SS Grayling. Now, the Grayling has got a lot of damage, and it's trying to make it back to Townsville. But we keep getting the... the yep, there it goes. I thought it was going to go down. I mean, it had 98%. Hey, look at that. Destroyer, the Stewart. Uh, here against the SSI-166, the Japanese sub. And you can see here it was a sub attack. The Stuart uh, was in red. The Japanese sub was in green to start with. That kind of tells you who found who, right? Uh, somebody had put that in the comments. I guess that never really dawned on me before how you could tell on a submarine whether it's a sub attack or an ASW attack. Uh, but the one in green is the one doing the attacking. Anyway, uh, launched four torpedoes at the Stuart and then dove deep. Uh, and then we ran out of ASW ammo. Well, you'd never want that, right? Uh, but no hits on either side. Alright, going through our Coast Watcher reports, unloading task forces if there is any such thing this turn. Okay, we're merging up there. He had a lot of submarine activity off Perth, and I've got destroyers in everything, and, and where I can, multiple destroyers. I've also got some down by Melbourne where he had some submarine activity uh, you know, trying to escort these things the best we can. We were a little lax early in the game, and it really cost us uh, with some task forces. But now I, I don't know that I have any task forces out on the map that don't have some sort of escort. All right, we had bad weather over Cagayan, so our seagulls couldn't go up this time. Uh, ten Oscars sweep over Changsha. Of course, we have no cap. Here come the Zeros in on Kagayan. Uh, I bet he's going to try to bomb there and see if he can take our Seagulls out. <laughs> They're so deadly. Here's a bombing run just to the east of uh, Cyan. Okay. See, we got a lot of what looked like a lot of flak up in the air, but the Japanese take no losses. 15 casualties for us on the ground. That group that's running down the road out of Yanon. And then we've got the other part of it I split off that's trying to get right here. Uh, but man, it's been slow going. They're going over this mountainous terrain, and they just get bombed multiple times every turn. One damage, 14 casualties reported. And 41 more bombers in here, 33 casualties on the ground this time. And then the last lone group that we have out here in southeastern China, he comes in with about, what, 70 bombers? No, 60 bombers or so. We damage two planes, take seven casualties on the ground. Uh, 
Same group getting bombed yet again. Uh, 15 casualties on the ground this time. And about 35 bombers on this group that's just outside of Ai Chang. Uh, seven casualties reported. Oscar sweeping over Changsha again. They find nothing. Bombing east of Yan'an again. 15 casualties on the ground. Bombing west of Yan'an. And 152 casualties that time. Now again, no squads destroyed, so they can repair, but you know that certainly disrupts them if they get uh, attacked. We're trying to run as fast as we can. It also slows them down um, if they're in move mode. They take cover, so they don't go they don't go very far. Uh, 19 Sonia's in on this group, kind of east of Changsha. That's that third war area group that's trying to get here to Hangyang. Six Sonia's bombing there again. Seven casualties this time. All right, the group west of Yunnan, my goodness, just over and over, 54 casualties there. Group into southeastern China, eight ands, nine casualties there. Now, this is our bombing run here. We took seven Blenheims. And we were coming down here and bombing Bangkok, of all places. I just put him on ground bombing, and, you know, I left it up to the commander's discretion. He decided to take these seven Blenheims. Uh, Lodric didn't have any cap up above it, and we got 23 casualties out of it. Okay. Just trying to keep him honest a little bit. Surprised he's not really going after Rangoon, but he knows that's where we have our very best planes and pilots. They're all in at Rangoon at this point. Okay, just kind of the usual bombing runs there. We're reporting some submarines or potential submarines now. That's out near Buella, or Buella, Bali Poppin, something near Busselton. I just like to say Busselton. Okay, now he's bombing into Sumatra. 26 casualties on the ground there. Tojo sweeping over Wu Chow. This is us spotting his aircraft. Not much action yet this turn. That's always good for us. That's what I like to see. I spend these whole uh, combat resolutions going, gosh, let nothing happen. It, it, in this game, that hasn't uh, happened very often, certainly. We've had a couple of turns that were a little slower, but for the most part, it's been constant. Every turn, something has happened. Land move attack phase. Uh, Japanese deliberate attack against this group trying to get back to Hang Yang. He caught up with them. Uh, you know, they just don't have anything left. They've been so bombed, they're completely disrupted, and they just jump back into Changsha. They're like, okay, we're out of here. Uh, let's see how many men we lost, though. They lost 58, we lost 755, including 35 destroyed squads. So it was well worth them, worth it for him to uh, try to catch up with us. Uh, this is just a Japanese bombardment attack. And he took 11 casualties. We took none. We had a couple of guns backfire, evidently. Japanese deliberate attack at Malang. Well, these the groups that we have out here, once they got kicked out of Surabaya, 
or swear Baha, whichever it is, I don't know. I always hear it 13 different ways. Um, once we got kicked out of there, these guys are just done for, you know. Uh, they may retreat. They may not surrender yet, but it's only a matter of time. Uh, 798 to 214 on the adjusteds there. Uh, he took 375 casualties. We took 3,965. Boo. Okay, he's going to take another, what is this? Uh, Katen Duanus. Sure, you can have it. We don't have anything there. Most of those little bases are worth like two points, I think. I mean, it adds up. Don't get me wrong. I don't want to lose them. I'm just saying, you know, they're little little bases. Deliberate attack at Bandawang. Now, Bandawang, sometimes people will set up at Bandawang as a major defense because you're up on this mountaintop. Um, I didn't do that here. I've got it all in Batavia. But he had a 461. We had a 74. But as you can see, defender terrain, we get a plus there. So he took 288 casualties, only one squad destroyed. We took 118 casualties. So really not, you know, not that big of a big losses there as you might suspect when he does a deliberate attack. But we we live to fight another day at Banduang. And now we're expanding forts. So that was it for uh, March 21st. The spring equinox passes. Uh, I'll point out that we're exactly on that day uh, in real life, right? Uh, spring equinox, March 21st. Just a few years later, I guess 80 years later, exactly. 80th anniversary of this today. I always like to read along and um, see what happened on this day in in the Pacific War. Uh, just I just do it on, you know, I like Google it, right? Uh, but there's almanacs, you know, that'll tell you exactly what happened on this day in the Pacific War. It's a nice way to learn about the war and also just kind of gauge how the game's going overall. Um, you know, he's a little behind. I say he, Lodric, the Japanese in this game, just just a little behind in Java. Uh, he's certainly doing much better in China, uh, but behind in Java. Java, Sumatra, you know, he, he's running a little bit behind. Now, he's got a little more time, uh, but they've, well, I, I'm not going to say the exact date they fell, because I'm not sure the exact date, uh, but he is, I, I know when I looked the other day, he was just a little behind the uh, historical. Although I think he's destroyed more ships, to be fair. Uh, in that theater, in that area, in and around Java. He certainly did in the Philippines uh, because, you know, when I agreed to two-day turns, I guess I hadn't gamed it out that that would not allow you to get a lot of stuff out of Manila. And so, you know, he took out a lot of stuff there. Okay, he's got a PB that's now on the offense, but I think we found him first because the Pollock was uh, green originally. And let's see if we get any torpedoes off. Yeah, it was a sub-attack. That's what I thought I saw. Uh, Buna here, and, you know, we... It elected not to launch torpedoes because it's a PB. I mean, it's a very low-value ship. So that's actually a good job by the captain, I think. And now it is March 22nd, 1942. We had a we had a submarine there that was trying to get from the Dutch East Indies back up to Colombo that was showing it was having a hard time staying afloat. That's what that message was. Mine sweeping. I've been trying to lay a lot more mines here lately. Um, certainly, probably was a little behind in that in the game. I'm trying to lay more and more mines, and hopefully we'll get something that hits a mine. Uh, we're continuing to merge out here by Perth, as you just saw. Uh, looks like we just sighted a number of Japanese ships right on the southern coast of India. So we may be coming back for another bite at the uh, Bombay Apple. We'll have to make sure we get everything out of there we can. We just can't afford to take those kind of losses again. Not in this game. 
Now, uh, we've already taken three massive task force losses where he surprised us with his carriers. Uh, we just really can't afford to take any more. Okay, uh, zeros are flying up over the top of Kagayan again. Again, I think he doesn't quite know what we have here because those seagulls have been going out and bombing things. Uh, I think he's hoping to draw some other aircraft up. Of course, the seagulls will not go up and cap. Uh, they're, you know, float planes. They're going to go out and try to bomb what they can, but that's all they're going to do. 64 casualties on the group coming down the road from Yanan yet again. 27 Marys to bomb them again. 42 casualties. Now into southeastern China. The same old stacks. You know them well by now. Two damage points. We haven't been damaging or destroying nearly as many planes recently. Uh, 22 casualties reported there. Okay, 26 more bombers in there. 24 casualties total. This is the group again, just north of Aicheng. These are cavalry groups that I'm going to send out and try to cut rail lines where I can. We take 120. These guys take a lot of casualties when they get bombed, though, these cavalry groups. All right, 14 more bombers uh, on that same group. 49 casualties this time. Tojo's over the top of Wu Chao. I think last time I said that should be a dish of some sort. Tojo's over Wu Chao. Uh, northeast of Aicheng. Okay, we're just sighting aircraft now. There was actually no bombing there. Hey, guess what? It's the stack west of Yan'an. 43 more casualties. Again, no destroyed squads, but uh, ultimately they're going to be have an attack value of zero when he finally catches up with us. Hey, it's our Blenheims again, and again, he's got no cap, and we're running down to Bangkok. One nut in Bangkok. Uh, 24 casualties reported on the ground for the Japanese, so our Blenheims have created about 50 casualties. We get to know what that feels like for once, to bomb instead of be bombed. It's going to be the title of my autobiography. Bomb instead of being bombed. All right, sighting more aircraft. They are now landing, returning to their bases. Okay, we see ca we see seven ships out near Espiritu Santo or uh, Luganville is the base out there. We're seeing, you know, a lot of quote-unquote ships, but a lot of these are probably submarines that are on the surface. Okay, bombing Changsha. Nope, just sweeping over Changsha. Nothing doing there. You can see his sweep is at 16,000 feet. Good to know. Bombing into Sumatra with the Nels here. Uh, no losses at all. It was in the light rain. Uh, but 15 Bettys are going to come and try a second time. No losses there again in the light rain. Well, then 18 more Nels say, well, we'll try it too. Target practice out here. 19 casualties reported that time. Now these are my Swamp Rats just north of Moresby. These poor, these poor gents out there, they've got no food. They're in the middle of a swamp. They've gotten kicked out of their nice digs at Port Moresby. 30 casualties reported. They've got nothing left. I mean, if he attacks them with anything, they are uh, just paper mache out here. Uh, one damage plane, 20 casualties. And you're going to hit him again. 27 Nels in. 90 casualties this time. So just chip, chip, chipping away. Here come uh, 56 or so bombers. And two damage sallies, 14 casualties on the ground. Now the stack west of Yan'an, 52 more casualties for these poor souls. 13 ands, just the group east of Yan'an, nothing doing there. 16 lilies west of Yan'an. 49 more casual. I mean, eventually nobody's going to be able to walk anymore on our march. 
Uh, nine Sonyas uh, coming into Changsha, as a matter of fact. Interesting. Uh, heavy rain here, so a total miss. Six Sonyas into Changsha. Okay, nothing happened there as far as casualties go. Fighter over Pagu, over Bandawang. Okay, the Mori, that was the destroyer that was hit by his carrier group a couple of turns ago. And you can see, now it says the Russell sank, uh, but it was the Mori that was there. I almost feel like that almost has to be a bug. I We only had the one destroyer there, the Mori, uh, but it said the DD Russell sank. Uh, I know that we had a situation like that uh, not too long ago uh, where a similar thing happened. We'll have to look at the ship sunk last turn when we set up next time and see what it tells us actually sunk. Okay, uh, Japanese shock attack at Pagu, and as you can see, engineers reduced the fortifications to three, to two, to one, and then he captures Pagu and knocks us out of here. Now, hopefully, we gave him some really tough losses there because we had a level four fort there. We had a pretty good, you know, ground group there they were like 500 points of av not terrible uh but as you can see allied adjusted defense was 145 i don't get that at all um 2448 he has got 70,000 troops well you know i mean we got a decent sized force at rangoon we had 10,000 troops of course he's got a lot of guns and a lot of vehicles and he's getting a lot from that uh combat modifiers we had really bad morale and experience he did a shock attack which gives him a plus he took 1875 in casualties we took 2282 well uh it's a little better for us than what we've been seeing but we also have a had a level four fort so you know that's not bad for him to take a level four fort with you know pretty close to parity uh, as far as casualties go, I think he'll take that every single day. Japanese bombardment attacks. So those troops uh, fell back into Rangoon, where we have a huge force, but I don't think it's going to be enough to hold them off. Uh, out here, uh, ground combat, Japanese bombardment attack as he hits that with bombardment again. He's now doing another deliberate attack. You can see all toll, he's probably got a little less than 450 av. We've got 60. You know, I mean, he's got us... Uh, uh, you know, like seven or eight to one. All right, but we hold on somehow. Uh, you can see terrain, forts, leaders are, you know, we get pluses for all of that. He's got good leaders too. He takes 301 casualties. We take 136. That might be our best result of the war so far. Uh, the guys at Banduang, the heroes. Okay, now we're, that's it. I mean, that's the, uh, that's the action for this time. Fairly slow turn, except, I mean, the big headline is he takes Pagu, right? So he's just outside of Rangoon now. He's one hex away. Uh, he's also pushing on Bandawang. Once Bandawang falls, then it's all on Batavia. I'm just hoping they can hold out there at Java for another couple of weeks, let's say. And let's hope we can hold at Rangoon, I don't know, for a week uh, maybe longer. I mean, a week would be what, you know, approximately three or four turns. Um, it's going to take him a turn to get over the river and get into the hex in Rangoon. And then once he's there, we've got a high fort level. We've got about a thousand av. It looks like he's bringing about 2,400 av to the battle. When I say av, I mean attack value. That's how values are measured for ground forces in this game. So, I mean, we'll see. I don't know. I mean, you know, I'm definitely not expecting to hold either place. It's just a matter of how much damage we can do to him, uh, you know, before the inevitable happens. Let's put it that way. So all in all, though, quiet turn. That's good for us. We didn't lose any ships. We didn't really lose any planes. Uh, we got bombed quite a bit, but we always do. He did take Pagu, and he is attacking Banduang. Uh, but all in all, good turn for the Allies. And when we come back and set up next time, 
I do want to check out that situation with the Destroyers because I feel like it got the name wrong, which I think is kind of interesting for a game that, you know, has been out this long. Uh, but I, I, I may be mistaken. I mean, it may not have anything to do with the game. I'm going to look at that again. Uh, we'll also, I'm going to look up exactly when Batavia fell. Of course, it wasn't Batavia at that time. Um, oh, I'm sorry. It's not Batavia now. It's it's uh, Jakarta, right? Uh it was it was during that time they got the name right now uh but i it is jakarta right that that becomes batavia becomes so anyway we'll check out when that fell historically because i think he's at least a week maybe a little longer from taking it which pushes us almost into april uh i've also got the episodes coming up on march 25th where i go through every counter we've got on the map uh that is very educational at least it was for me <laughs> you know, having to go through and describe it all and why I'm doing what I'm doing uh, can actually be quite educational uh, when you do it, when you do it, even if you kind of go through them all every time, uh, having to explain it adds a whole nother layer to that. So anyway, this has been Strategy Gaming Dojo. When I come back next time, it'll be March 23rd. It'll be our setup phase. We'll do the high level, look at the stats, the old usual, and then it'll be the time after that we go through every counter. So anyway, Strategy Gaming Dojo, I'll talk to you next time. Have a good one.